Welcome to the Federal Milk Marketing Order 33 update provided by Novus AgriScience as well as Balchem. I am recording this uh, using the data at the end of the close on August 4th because uh, the summer has been a situation where if you uh, change a particular day uh, the changes of what the outlook is and I just kind of need to draw a hard close on the 4th and uh, give you what I think is going on in the industry. So what I wanted to do was really focus on what influences the price of milk. Now, at the end of the day, the milk price is 100% influenced by what's called the National Dairy Sales Report that comes out every Wednesday. And then uh, once a month, uh, the average up the ones for that month, and then that calculates your class three and class four prices. Now, there are some other things that impact your PPD and market adjustments and those sorts of things, but I want to focus primarily on class three and class four milk prices. And so this is the uh, most recent National Dairy Sales Report. And I show this only to say that for the week ending July 30th, people that were buying 40 pound block cheese paid $2.08. And that is what actually controls the price of milk. It's what cheese, whey, non-fat dry milk, and butter can be sold for. And that is reported to the USDA. And then that is used in the calculations. So this is a graph that I like to look at, which is the weekly National Dairy Sales Report on a class three basis. And basically four or five of these get averaged together and that's what comes up with your uh, monthly price. But the reason I like to look at this, it gives me a little bit more insight as to what's going on. So we had a big drop in class three right when the pandemic hit. We had a food box program, another food box program. You know, and then we've been slowly increasing uh, price. And you can see where this is rounded out, but is now, you know, headed down. We can look at this on a monthly basis. And these are the ones that are actually in your milk check. And so it's exactly the same graph, except, you know, consolidated into a monthly basis. And one of the things that I wanted to spend a little time on is these are controlled by the individual components. And so what we know is that Whatever cheese changes by a dollar, you're going to get $9.6 in class three. But if butter changes by a dollar, you're only going to get 42 cents. And if whey changes by a dollar, you're going to get, you know, almost $6. So there's a much heavier weighting on class three on a penny per penny basis for whey and cheese. So then what I did is I went back and asked the question is, you know, what were historical numbers? And basically I used uh, 2016 to 2019, you know, for these three things. And so butter, you know, used to be around 224, uh, cheese around $1.59 and way around 37 cents. And we'd have a class three somewhere around 1527. Now with the most recent, uh, class and component numbers in uh, July, we were 295 for butter, 220 for cheese, and 55 cents for whey with a 22.52 class three, which means we came up $7.25. So then the question is, what drove that? And really, it's all cheese. Of that $7.25, cheese drove at $5.90, whey, changed it by a dollar and butter was pretty insignificant at 30 cents. So the bottom line of this is if you're going to kind of keep an eye on your class three price, it's all driven by cheese basically. And so if you follow the cheese market, you're going to know what's going on with class three. And it turns out that on the most recent class three announcements, it was down a dollar 81 from last month. And now uh, you can see that you know, basically by seeing the, the drop in cheese. So the drop in cheese leads to an interesting question. And so this is the end of the month cheese stocks uh, reported in the cold storage report. And here we are, you know, the latest one we had uh, for June. And we're about 1.5 billion pounds of cheese. We've been adding cheese at a rate of about 3.1% per year. And how long can we continue this uh, increase in, in cheese stocks? 
Now, the obvious question is, has demand kind of changed the same way? Uh, but it looks like it, it hasn't. I did an interesting uh, calculation the other day, which is asking the question of how many pounds of cheese do we get out of 100 pounds of milk? And so this last data, about 6.1 pounds of cheese for every 100 pounds of milk. If we go back to 2015, it was only about 5.6. So we've increased the amount of cheese coming out of 100 pounds of milk by 10%, clear up from 5.6 to 6.1. So there are a couple explanations for this. You know, number one, more milk going to cheese than anything else because the actual cheese yield is about 10 pounds of cheese per 100 pounds of milk, okay? So one question would be, are we having more cheese go into cheese plants? And so this would suggest about 60% of the milk is being used for cheese. And then uh, the rest of the milk is being used for you know, other components. But there is one other explanation for that. And that is the fact that components have been rising. And basically, you know, what we're going to look at is, uh, the, is the protein percentage. And so here are your protein percentages, again, for order 33. And they've clearly been going up. You know, we've, we've got some nice upward trends or seasonality, but we've got some nice upward trends. So I went back and said, you know, where were we on June of 2015 and where are we today? And in fact, we've gone up from about 3% to 3.1%, but that's only a 3.3% increase. So of that, you know, 10% that we increase cheese from milk, you know, there's about 3.3 that we can attribute to more protein. You know, so we're still missing about 6.7%. And so I'm going to suggest that what's going on is that we're getting uh, more cheese capacity and more cheese is being made out of the milk. But there's an interesting discussion with this as it relates to cheese. Just because components have gone up about 3.3% basically says for cheese production, we need 3.3% less cows than we used to have. So to make the same amount of cheese, you know, we need fewer cows. And so let's uh, kind of look at class four. It acts a little bit different. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, there were no government programs for class four and it dropped at the beginning of the pandemic. You know, it kind of limped along here. And historically, we're around $16. Uh, we kind of limped along at 14 and then now we've been increasing up with a little bit of a dip and then we're probably heading down just a, a little bit. And we look at the monthly figures. It doesn't show the downward trend yet because we haven't got the uh, monthly data yet. So we did exactly the same thing that we did for class three and we find out that a dollar of butter change adds $4.24 uh, to class four. But a dollar of non-fat dry milk adds twice as much, about 8.6. So like class three that is being driven by cheese, class four is being driven by non-fat dry milk. And really, when we look at it overall, butter is almost a stepchild. It's in both of them, but it has a much lower impact than either of those previous two. So again, I went back and looked at, you know, historical numbers. Again, butter's 224. Uh, Non-fat dry milk was around 84 cents. We had a 1450 class four. You know, right now at the latest uh, release, we're at 295 for butter, $1.80 for non-fat dry milk, and at 25.79, which means we have an $11 increase in class four over historical numbers. And again, that increase is being driven, not entirely, but highly by non-fat dry milk. So if non-fat dry milk comes down, cheese comes down, bottom line, milk prices are going to come down, even if butter is uh, being held high. And that's kind of what's going on in the market right now. So we look at the class four prices that just came down about four cents. It's looking like uh, they're going to begin falling uh, probably in the August or September uh, milk checks, but right now it's only down about four cents on your uh, announcement of class and components for order 33. 
Now, if we look at your statistical uniform prices, this would be the June numbers of 2578. This has been just a phenomenal upward run. I mean, it's been a great uh, run since about August of uh, last year because historically you're around $17 for statistical uniform prices. So you've seen about an $8 increase, you know, since about August. And if we look at where these are projected now, these have some wiggle room in it. They're my best guess uh, based on some historical data. But it looks like, you know, we're going to have probably one more month, you know, in the 25, and then we're going to be trickling down here and be in, you know, the 20s, you know, by the first quarter of uh, next year. And if we look at, you know, what's driving that, so here's our class three price. It was 2252. Uh, looks like it's going to drop. And again, it's even down a little bit uh, further today, but uh, we're going to be in that $20 plus or minus a few cents here for the next four months uh, for class three. And class four, as I said, we're going to have one more month in that 24, and then we're going to probably be headed down to that 20 number. And so this is through the end of the year around 21. So let's look at some of the uh, bigger factors. So that's the things that are, you know, very specifically relative to class three and class four. Now on the world market, we've had basically a downturn uh, in prices ever since the middle of March. And in this last session for the global dairy trade was down 5%. Uh, that was pretty significant. And so we've lost you know, significant value in the world market. The other thing that's being touted right now are exports. Uh, we exported about 96.8 million pounds of cheese in June, and that's being held up as, man, that's great. You know, we're up 30%. But the question I always ask is, if you go back and look at that cheese as a percent of May production, because the cheese was probably made in May and exported in June, that's only 8%. So we're up from six and change up to eight. Uh, but overall, that's not what's going to save the dairy industry as uh, we've got to export a whole lot more cheese than 8% for it to impact the price. The thing that's uh, also impacting that is the US dollar. Uh, the US dollar was, you know, in that 92, 94 range, you know, back here in 2021, early 2022. That's what's seen really good for exports. This thing has just gone up. You know, there's been a war premium in it and uh, lots of other issues. That, you know, it's slowly coming down, uh, but today it's up. You know, we added a whole pile of jobs on the uh, jobs report today, and the dollar is starting to even come up yet today. Uh, but this is very bad for exports, and I think it's going to really put some headwinds into exporting uh, non-fat dry milk and uh, other components, you know, from the U.S. with a very strong dollar. So one of the other things that's impacting uh, kind of the view on the market is uh, decreasing uh, cow numbers. And, but I don't feel that cow numbers are decreasing. In fact, I think they're actually expanding. So here's our slaughter numbers. Slaughter numbers have been going down. You know, they've kind of leveled out and gone up just a little bit. Uh, but we are just not slaughtering cows. And in fact, if you look at the uh, four-week trend the last across the couple of years, we're exactly where we were, you know, in 2020 and 2021. Uh, very, very similar. And uh, in 2020, we were adding cows uh, something fierce. And again, here is the actual cow numbers. Uh, so for a couple months, we were hearing that you know cows are are short. Uh, we're about 9.4. 403 in terms of cow numbers and then all of a sudden the latest milk production report uh, the government found a bunch of cows so the latest report is 9.423 yes that's down from a year ago at 9.5 uh, but that year ago number is completely uh, unsustainable and this red line just kind of takes that current number and and projects it back and so we were a little more than that in 2018 and this is exactly where milk prices were down uh, when we were this high milk prices were down when we dropped these cows this is when milk prices went up and so right now you know we're adding cows i don't think we're going to get back up to this level uh, you know just with a combination of headwinds but anytime we're over 9.4 and significant change uh, that's just a lot of cows around and again, remember that we were looking at those component numbers. We need like three or four percent 
less cows to make the same amount of cheese. And so 9.423 is different uh, today than it was in 2018. And I didn't show you the graph, but also milk per cow has gone up. So as we increase milk per cow and we increase components, that says we need a smaller herd to get the same job done. So one of the questions that uh, gets asked, you know, you know, should we be feeding more for fat? Should we be feeding more for protein? You know, where's our money going to be made? And I'm a guy that always thinks that healthy rumens will take care of uh, all of that for you. But if we go to look at the fat price this month was 336, it's going to hold, you know, probably next month. And it's going to hold above $3 for the next few months. And that's just because butter is so strong. My view is anything over $2 on fat price is, a, you know, is a historically a pretty good number. The low we had a year ago was $1.85. Protein prices are, are coming down. You would expect that with cheese prices coming down. We were $2.91 uh, this month. Our high was $3.87 a couple months ago. It's looking like we're going to have a couple months of very low numbers. You know, will this pop back up this strong? Depends on what happens to cheese. If cheese stays at this dollar seventy-four, I doubt it'll uh, stay there. But again, our goal would be to have protein around three dollars. Uh, that's you know indicative of overall good milk prices. So at the close yesterday, uh, I usually try to calculate the rolling twelve-month average. So that's basically you know what are numbers looking like for the next twelve months. Uh, soybean meal without basis is just a little under four thirty. Corn is around two seventeen, and I calculate this uh, index, which is eight pounds of corn meal, eight pounds of soybean meal, uh, which gives me a two dollars and fifty-eight cents per cow per day. So the changes yesterday increased that by 10 cents a cow a day. Now at the same time, we've got a class three for the next year around 1964. We've got a class four at 2102, which gives us a blend of 50-50. Again, your order may be a little different, but that just kind of gives us an overall for the country of 2032. And that is down 16 cents a hundredweight. So this would suggest that at uh, least the change in the market yesterday was very negative for dairy margins when feed cost went up about 10 cents a cow a day and milk price came down 16 cents a hundredweight. It's uh, kind of interesting to look at these uh, rolling 12 month averages because corn you know, was up here around that 280, 260 number you know, back in April and May. Again, that's without basis. It's fallen off now in that 200, 210, and then it's popped up just a little bit. And I'll show you that uh, there's a lot of speculation that this is going to pop up uh, fairly significantly depending upon what happens with uh, kind of the weather in the next couple of uh, weeks as well as what the USDA does with uh, yield estimates. Soybean meal has been a kind of, it hasn't acted the same way. You know, we were in this fourth, 30, 440 kind of number. It came down, but it's really been hovering in this, you know, 390, 410 number, and it's actually also kind of heading up. There's lots of tailwinds to drive that up here. Again, if soybeans uh, end up going up, uh, this definitely will come up. There was an idea that uh, there would be a really low demand of soybean meal with uh, fewer cows, fewer pigs, fewer chickens, all these sorts of things, but that's not playing out at all. It looks like the demand for soybean meal is actually uh, very good and it carries an advantage over soybean oil, um, almost two dollars a bushel for the crush, so it very much is crushing uh, beans uh, specifically for meal. So now that we've got that uh, eight pounds of corn, eight pounds of soybean meal, and a 50-50 blend, we can actually look at a dairy margin. Now, this is not the total dairy margin. I know that. Uh, but it's just looking at what's happening in the change of this relative, you know, to what's going on with milk prices and corn and beans. And it, basically, the change was around uh, June 8th. And we were setting up here pretty good, and we peeled off $3 uh, at this point. And, then, and these are looking out for the next 12 months uh, when you're buying, you know, contracting corn, milk, uh, beans, these sorts of things. So we pulled about $3 off of that dairy margin, uh, you know, in the last two months. Just kind of finish this up with a little bit of uh, 
discussion of the weather. This is the map that everybody is uh, focusing on. It's the drought monitor. And again, down here in Texas, uh, this area is just burning up, just absolutely uh, devastating. But the Western Corn Belt, you know, continues to see, you know, a fair amount of drought. And that's why the yield estimates are going to be interesting to see. You know, a lot of drought, you know, even parts of Michigan are in a drought at this point. Parts of uh, central and northern New York, uh, really New England. Uh, so a lot of the country is under, you know, drought at this point. And the one thing that's always good to look at is how did it change? And so I'm comparing July 5th to August 2nd. So basically a month. So you can see where this got a lot drier. This got a lot of wetter. There's lots of uh, rain down here in the southeast. The eastern part of the Corn Belt uh, is a little wetter. We've had these uh, Canadian storm track with these ridge riding storms that have been dropping uh, rain into here. But a large part of the western Corn Belt is still dry and this uh, New England area has uh, you know, gotten drier also. And this is the uh, big scare. This is through the 12th to the 18th of August. And if we look at temperatures, you know, hot, hot, hot in the Midwest and, you know, below normal precipitation. And so that would suggest uh, yields are probably going to be coming down a little bit on both corn and beans. Just finish this up with uh, heating oil because this is a proxy for arm farm diesel. It kind of gives an idea of uh, you know, what it's going to cost to harvest these things and all the other field work we do. You know, this is September. This was clear up to 4.30. Uh, it's kind of come down to about 3.30, so that's been a nice relief. Uh, but it is up significantly from where you know, we could have booked it in at $2 in, in December. You know, so we've seen basically a doubling of that diesel price. And always just a comment about uh, this uh, relative to booking this. I've, uh, several farms I know booked, uh, you know, all their diesel needs through a local co-op or somebody else but didn't actually pay for it. Uh, and they actually got bumped out of those contracts. I've got another dairy, a large dairy, that actually booked it the entire year on the market like this. Now that requires some margin. Uh, so they booked all their diesel in at uh, basically 210, 211, somewhere in there. So they're looking very, very good relative to the rest of the dairies around. With that, I will finish up and hope this information at least helpful to uh, have an idea of what's going on with milk prices and uh, try to get you another update next month. Uh, it was a little slow this last month, but partly the uh, industry has just been moving so fast on prices every day that I was going to sit down and do a video for you. It, you know, it changed by the end of the day and I basically started over again. So I hope everybody stays safe and uh, have a good week.